All right. So we good. We live. Oh, we're live. I can see that. Yanni, welcome, man. Thank you, Paul. It's so good to have you with us tonight uh, on uh, Zoom and uh, in our conversation together and on uh, Facebook for everyone that's joining us. Welcome. We're so glad that you guys are joining with. And uh, Yanni, where are you sitting? Because it looks absolutely beautiful. Wow, brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for the opportunity of joining you guys. Um, I'm here literally in a place called Sitting Bourne. <laughs> it's Sitting Bourne. Sitting Bourne. It's east of London, um, towards the coast, uh, close to Maidstone uh, and the Dover Cliffs. Um, there's a beautiful little camping site there that does what they call uh, glamping, which is uh, the shortened version of glamorous camping. <laughs> and uh, Sheree and I and the boys uh, are just taking a two-day mini break. Um, yeah, it's still summer holiday in the United Kingdom. Um, our schools reopen next uh, Thursday, wow. uh, which will be the start again for us of the school year. So our kids haven't been in, in, uh, in class since uh, I think the 23rd or 24th of March um, this year. So they've been homeschooling since then, and then obviously the summer holiday taking a break. So we're, we're here outside. I'm enjoying the absolutely beautiful fresh air, sitting on an apple tree. Uh, the big danger is that some of these big apples end up falling on my head during the nice. talk. Um, and I'll, know, I'll take that as a cue. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's summer by you guys. It's spring here by us. We, we are getting out of winter. And... Um, it's, it's really a privilege to have you with us uh, tonight uh, on our Wednesday night chats. And uh, we've, uh, we've invited some friends from across the world just to, just to hear what God is doing in their lives, in their families, in their churches, uh, through this crazy time that we've just gone through. So, I mean, I know the UK got hit really hard with this lockdown yeah. and the virus and stuff. And you guys are yeah. exiting that now as well. Uh, Paul, we, um, we were actually one of the most affected nations, um, especially in the, within the European context. Um, last Tuesday, um, I was uh, attending a cricket practice that one of the boys was at, and um, there was a guy from the NHS, one of the other dads that was there, and he actually said that our area, um, Epsom, the place that Sharon and I live in, was at the beginning of the COVID, um, one of the worst hit areas in the entire nation. Wow. Um, that has got a lot to do with our age demographic in that area. Um, and um, so we've had to deal with a number of things that we as a church, you know, haven't had to deal with uh, before. We, we had to deal with people actually physically getting ill. Um, we have a number of workers that work within the NHS who are frontline within the COVID and went through just some of the most horrific things. Sure. Um, and also we had uh, two um, two deaths in the congregation, not of people in the congregation, but related. And yeah. um, whilst only one of them was COVID related, um, the implications of COVID was, was quite traumatic, obviously on those families because they couldn't be together in the last yeah. uh, hours, you know, the funeral arrangements, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been an interesting season for us. The, the British uh, government has, has taken quite a strong view on things like lockdown and and whilst uh, I think your lockdown in South Africa was more severe than our lockdown here in the New United Kingdom. I would, um, I would classify that by, by rules, but, but not by, by yeah, application. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my next sentence was going to be, but because of the British um, way of living, um, it's adhered to very strictly. Um, so, you know, we, we've, been, we've been in our house for months and months and months on end without any sure. other contact uh, ex ex except going to the local shopping, you know, a supermarket to, to come buy food and stuff like that. So it's been, a, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's been unprecedented. It's been a crazy, crazy season. Um, mm. but, but I believe also probably one of the most fruitful ones um, mm. uh, that we've experienced in, in many different ways. So, I mean, you as a church are still, um, you're, you're still, you don't still have public meetings yet? No, um, we don't, we haven't reopened our services yet. We actually aren't planning to reopen our services until January 2021. Wow. Sure. Um, so, for the remainder of this year, we're, we're, we're considering staying online. Um, and just in that, um, perhaps not just thinking about services, but how do we perhaps create community? And also, you know, reach out to people in different ways. So um, mm. for us, the restrictions at this stage is still very strong as far as public gatherings are concerned. So we aren't allowed to sing 
um, which is one of the biggest wow. reasons why we would love to gather. Um, so we aren't allowed to sing. Um, they've recently changed the leg legislation on that, that you no longer can just have one person up front singing behind a perspex screen, but you can now have a vocal team um, that actually wow. sings. And we just felt that perhaps it was still a season for God uh, just to keep us, um, you know, in, in ministry in a different way. Um, ministry yeah. hasn't stopped by no means. It's just ministry in a different way. So um, we'll continue yeah. with that until at least January. And then we'll start considering different configurations, perhaps initially meeting up in homes and then perhaps redesigning a ministry in its totality um, mm. as the way I, goes forward. I think that is the, uh, that's, the, that's the word that God's really speaking to many people about. I know to us as well, it's a really redesigning. Um, going back to the simplicity of scripture of how God destined us to gather and the purpose of gathering. And so we're discovering that as well. Um, yep. We know that homes is the one way that's, a, it's biblical. It's there. Jesus did it gathering together. And I think it's that restructuring redesigning, which is uh, pivotal at this time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, as, as with any other church um, on the planet, we, we had to take our ministry online within two days Mm -hmm. um, it was probably the worst week of my life. Um, just stuck down behind the computer, getting stuff and nothing that you won't um, uh, be familiar, not be familiar with um, in that season. But it was crazy. However, coming through that now, you know, I think um, I think we have to not when we think about church, it's not about going back to something once yeah. lockdown restrictions are, you know, are lifted up. I think in every sense, every church has now become a new church plant um, because it's mm. about rediscovering what groups looks like and it's re about rediscovering what our gatherings look like. And, mm. and I think um, we have to come to a place where we, where we start thinking about um, an online uh, ministry engagement, not just as, you know, um, as a platform for us to reach or to connect people, but how do we find effective ways to actually minister to people through these platforms? Um, because I think some of this will never leave us. Um, this yeah. is going to become something of this is going to become the new norm um, as we go forward into the future. So um, I think it's going to be an exciting season. You know, if you, um, if you think what the new Testament church went through in Acts chapter two, um, uh, I don't think there were two, dissimilar experiences in terms of emotions um of you know having to think creatively can you imagine having jesus with you for you know three and a half years and suddenly he's gone um and then the joy and the elation of the fact that he's no, not dead you know he's risen from the dead um and then spending 40 days with him and then him disappearing into this cloud of glory um, and I, I can just imagine the, 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 the early disciples' sense of confusion, um, of, of loss, um, you know, the, the things they had to deal with. I, I can remember at the beginning of lockdown, somebody sent me an article, um, and the title of this article was called, This Discomfort You're Feeling is Actually Grief. And I thought to myself, oh, it's one, another one of those, you know, one of those articles, I'm not sure I want to read this, but I, I actually clicked on the link and I started reading it and, and then realized that what some of what was happening internally, it was actually grief. I was grieving, wow. um, you know, I was going through a sense of loss. There was anger, there was frustration. There were, there, there were these questions, if only, you know, and that was quite a, when I got to that, that part, which is normally on the third or the fourth stage of going through a grieving process, you know, if only, and, and we'd been, we'd been thinking about taking ministry online, you know, much earlier. And I'm thinking if only we had, you know, if only wow. we had done this and then coming to a place of, of, of normalization within that grief, where you start now saying, okay, this, this is my reality. This is what's happened, but how yeah. do I become creative out of this situation? Mm. Um, and I think some of the, the early church must have gone through that. Um, obviously, the outpouring of, the, of, of God's spirit actually to, you know, was an incredible catalyst in that. But not very long after that, we find a church flourishing. They're flourishing in the marketplace. They're flourishing in homes. They're flourishing in the synagogue. Yeah. And then the next big change comes. You know, the Roman government clamps down and, and suddenly there's persecution and, and Saul is trying to kill all the, uh, you know, the Christians off. And yet the church flourishes. Yeah. Um, for me, um, 
and I'm, I don't want to veer off this topic, but I think it is so integrally part of this topic for me. I think one of the things that has fascinated me about the whole COVID season is the resilience of humanity. Mm. Um, I'm fascinated by that. How, you know, how we have the capacity to be resilient. Um, sure. uh, <laughs> Adam and Eve in the garden, walking with God, talking with him, hearing his dreams, his passions, being able to share their dreams, this, this circle. Can you imagine this? This perfect circle, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, yeah. the man, Adam, his wife, Eve. It, I mean, just that, this, this moment of absolute value and valor and honor and bravery and adventure. Mm. I, I can, you know, can you imagine the conversations, the sense of excitement, the, the dreaming, the, you know, we, we, we could do this or we could, you know, this is, you know, and, and we could be this. Yeah. And, and then the fall comes that redefines this, not in the heart of God, but redefines it mm. in the heart of Adam and Eve. Sure. And, and that's what I think the church needs to take cognizance of, that COVID has not redefined God. Mm, it's, it's brought a redefinition to us of who he is yeah. in this situation. And so, you know, here's Adam and Eve and they leave the garden. I can imagine this is lockdown, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> on, on steroids. Um, can you imagine them outside of the garden in the first week? Um, you know, Eve, what are we going to do? How, how, does it, how is this going to work? You know, is, is God in this? Is God even going to talk to us again? You know, is, uh, what are we going to do? What must we do? Um, you, know, can, we, you know, a month later, what, what is this? You know, what is the six months down the line? Just a number of, of, of years later, we find humanity flourishing. They're playing musical instruments. Uh, you know, mm. Genesis 4, Genesis 5. They're, they're farming with cattle. They're, they, they've built tents. They, they're starting to build cities. They're, they're thinking. There's a sense of innovation within the human spirit yeah. that no manner of change has the capacity to quench. Um, there's there's mm. a resilience inside of what God has created that yeah. I think um, we must never, ever, ever underestimate. Um, and it's from this position that I think, you know, when I, when I started realizing and recognizing that some of this discomfort that was on the inside, I'm actually just grieving. I'm, I'm grieving the loss of normalcy. Uh, we actually had to had some, have some conversations with our kids um, in that, uh, those early days of COVID because our kids, uh, which they never do, they started having nightmares, uh, not lots, but they started waking up at night crying, you know, are you guys going to be okay? Are we going to be okay? And realizing that the sense of grief and loss actually touches on such a wider scale. Um, but God's spirit, you know, is, is, is faithful in this, in that um, God brings us through because he's created us with a capacity, that resilience mm. um, in order to come through this. Um, wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. So that, that like leads me into a question here for us. Um, what, are you, what are you seeing uh, the father doing in this time? And what is, what is he inviting us into as his sons, as his sons? You know, I mean, um, we know that the, the lost are not hearing him or we hope they will be waking up to, to the reality that there's a, a God out there, but what is God doing in this time? And, and what is he inviting us into? I think God is, is inviting us into a space where we take faith, hope, and love to, to our communities, faith, uh, Paul, to me, signifying this, um, the sense of discovery who we are in Christ. People are asking questions um, all over the world. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sure it happens in your context as well. One of the most Googled things um, in our context is, you know, God, faith, church, church online. Wow. Um, people are asking questions um, and, and real questions. And I think if ever the church hadn't, opportunity to introduce people into this incredible relationship with God. Um, a number of weeks ago, I, I did a, a, a little a five day talk on Faith's, Facebook um, uh, around 12 o'clock, well, 12 o'clock our time about the gospel. 
because I just I just felt stirred again to have a look at what the gospel truly means. You know, Paul, yes. um, the apostle that writes in Romans chapter one, verse 16 and 17, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it introduces mm. me to this righteousness. I love the passion translation um, of, I think it's verse 16 or 17, can't remember exactly, but he says the righteousness of God empowers us to receive righteousness and then empowers us to live by it um, hmm. and that to me is the gospel um, you yeah. know and people so faith is the first important thing the second thing is is love how do we take love to our communities um, I don't know about you guys we've seen people lose jobs we've seen people lose income we've seen yeah. people um, lose house we've seen people uh, I mean as a church we took responsibility for the emergency food distribution in our community I think over a number of, of months we delivered over 9,000 hampers to people's doorsteps that were either sure. isolating or were in crisis and, and actually could physically not get out of their houses so I think we're going to enter a season um, especially coming out of COVID where we're going to have uh, people struggling with debt. Uh, we're going to have people struggling with loneliness. Um, I think the mental health mm. issue, um, which we're not always that very open about in the church. Um, I think we're going to face um, some real challenges in that with people struggling um, uh, with that. Uh, we had, um, we had a, a, a case here in the UK um, in the middle of COVID, where one of the people that were working on the front line of the NHS had seen a lady had seen five deaths on her ward in one day, and then just went wow. home and took her, took her own life. Um, sure. I think I think the reality of this is is going to be something that we as we as church need to mm. think about um, and address. How do we create spaces for people who are struggling? How do we show love to our community? Um, yeah. I think. Um, I think this is so important. Um, I recently connected with a pastor from Arkansas in the United States. Um, they took initiative as a church, um, a city church. They took initiative to uh, wipe out all the medical debt of everybody in their city. Wow. Um, it was about a three, three and a half million uh, dollar US dollar venture. Um, that they went to the, all the hospitals and said, who owes you money? We want to write that debt off, collected it together, brought the initiative to the church and the church brought money and they paid wow. off the medical debt of an entire city. You know, when I hear stories like that, I, I, there's something in that that I think speaks louder than, than anything else. In the midst of COVID, sorry, I don't know if I'm talking too much. Now you must interrupt no, keep me. going. Good. But um, in, in the middle of COVID, we as a church and other churches in our local area had a meeting with our, um, our chief exec of our council. And she, in the middle of the meeting, made this comment where she said, because they recognized that the church collectively, because our church took the lead on these emergency food distribution hampers, but all the churches really gathered around that and it was a, a local church initiative, more than one singular church. Um, but she so that's why they actually gave us this time. That's why she actually stepped up to meet with us. Um, and it was beautiful because in the midst, midst of this, she said, you know, that I'd, I'd walked past the church and, and the, the, there was a board up that said, um, you know, our doors might be closed, um, but God can still be made visible in our community. And, you know, there was something about that that resonated with her because she felt that the fact that the church was reaching out in love was this demonstration of love. Mm. And, and so I think if you're asking me what, what is God inviting us to, I think God is inviting us into opportunities to share the, the gospel, the good news of, of, of his you know, righteousness that comes. But secondly, I think it's an incredible opportunity for us to, um, to bring love to our communities and to show love. Here's the strange. Oh, I hope we haven't lost you. Okay, we seem like we've lost Yanni. So um, we're just going to see if we can uh, reconnect. If you guys can give us a few minutes and we'll, um, we'll see. He was on a roll. Let me just... Uh,
You back? Here we go. Are you back? Great. I can hear you. I see I'm a back. picture of you. Yes. Was that me that dropped? Yes, you dropped. Yeah. I'm. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, you can just turn your phone really? sideways. Okay, like that. Perfect. There we go. Now we got you. Now we lost okay, you. Let me just say, uh, okay, you're going to see me now. Here we go. How's that? We can see can you. You see me? Yes. Brilliant. All right. Wonderful. Cool. So, um, sorry about that. No, no worries. Yeah, yeah, here's what happened, Paul. You, um, you're, you're, in, you're in the bush, you know, so it's, uh, it's allowed. You know? <laughs> I, I, um, <laughs> I wanted to, I don't know how much of that you caught, but I was saying about how, how, how um, through people's giving, we've managed to sustain ministry. But the miracle happened within what we call our City Changer Projects. And our City Changer Projects um, is where we actually demonstrated the love of God. And we saw an exponential amount of money come into that and we now have the capacity to do way more to show the love of god to our community and to our city than what we ever had before and 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 covid was was part of why this happened so if you're asking me what is god inviting us into faith hope uh, faith love and the third one is hope because i what what hope means to me is that there are many systems in our cities and in our communities that are broken um, you know, this is the this is the upstream stuff. Um, we we the church loves dragging the people out of the river here at the bottom end, you know, and we drag them out one by one. Um, but the place upstream where they're falling into the river, the things that are causing them to end up in these situations of brokenness, we're not very good always at addressing that. Uh, um, you know, we're we're good at re, we're good at responding, we're good at reacting, but we're not very. Um, good at being proactive i think sometimes especially in the systems um, that we find ourselves in and so i think you know how do we address the systems that that will cause people to end up in poverty in the next season how do wow. we stop those cycles how do we stop cycles of debt how do we stop cycles of of, of family or marriage breakdown um, i think that'll be an important thing that we need to address and so if you're asking me what what is you know what is God inviting us into, uh, those would be the three prominent things that I believe God is invited. There are other things, but I I, I think those things are, are are those things remain paramount for me. They're the key things. So, so I'm I'm hearing a rediscovery of not just attending a meeting, and because I attend a meeting, I am now a Christian, and because I attend a meeting, I am now part of this church i'm hearing a rediscovery on that and going no it's uh, the the meetings are good but it's it's the 10 percent of what we do we are we're called out of our churches into our communities to release faith hope and love there yeah. so just a uh, one question maybe you can just comment on what i just said as well is um do you do you think and how should we rediscover um sharing the gospel because, you know, we've got this, it's like we've got this one hammer and we keep using the same hammer to share the gospel. And uh, what is the Lord showing you guys in how to share the gospel differently? Mm. I, I think um, just on your, in response to your question, maybe, Paul, um, I think a lot of why we end up not connecting Sunday to Monday um, is because we live compartmentalized lives. Um, you know, we, we, we put God in a box and we put, you know, work in a box and we put family in a box. Um, and it's part of our Western uh, culture. It's part of the Western way of thinking. Um, uh, a little bit of a philosophy behind this. Um, you know, I, uh, the Greeks and the Romans had a, uh, had a thought pattern that said the gods lived on the mountains and everything that they engaged in was holy. And then they created mankind and, and everything that mankind engaged in was actually just a copy of the original. And the Greeks had a word for it. They called it mimesis. We get our English word from that mime. And, and what does a mime artist do? A mime artist, you know, shows you he has a wall, but there isn't really a wall. He's just making a copy of a wall. Wow. And, and, and some of that thinking, you know, that, that, you know, we have this spiritual life and we have our secular life. And as long as we keep on living like that, we'll never, ever connect 
um, Sunday to Monday. And, and I, I mean, I use that phrase, even I use that phrase. I use, even use lightly because I'm not too fond of the phrase, but the point is um, if you think about Jacob, um, you know, Jacob in scripture, he was this self-made man. He was a very wealthy farmer lived with livestock. Um, but he, um, he was dependent. He was dependent on, you know, food he was dependent on rain he was dependent on and and disease would not affect his livestock and stuff and and he sort of came to this idea where he felt you know if if somebody's going to make it i have to do it you know i you know the, in life there are winners and losers and i just want to make sure i'm not one of the losers yeah. and then he has this experience with god where he wrestles with god and remember the wrestling with god was was more about his spiritual nature than what it was about his physical, even though he ended up carrying it in his physical body. He carried the effect of that. He walked around with a limp for the rest of his, year, his yeah. life. But he comes out of that experience and he says these words. He says, um, uh, you know, the Lord is here and I didn't even know it. And, and when I read that, there was something that jumped in my spirit because I, there's so many parts, if I can say it like that, there's so many parts of our lives that we don't even think God is there. But mm. if we looked carefully, we were discovering he, he's there and, and he's there even though we don't know it. Wow. You know, and, and so my question to the church is, you know, where, where is God? And, and you're not even seeing him at work there. Um, and I think once we recognize that, we're going to move beyond the boundaries of, you know, church is something I attend to church is something actually that I am. Um, the Greek word ecclesia, church, is actually a, a word that was used within a, uh, within a law term. It was a legal gathering of people, a community of people that had the capacity and the lawful um, uh, uh, ability to change things in their community. That's what the word ecclesia actually means. Wow. And so when we use the word church, it's, it's in the least sense, you know, a place of gathering that I just go to or a Wednesday night, you know, connect group that I just attend. Ecclesia is a group of people who take authority within a certain geographical space Come and, on, eh? and now have the authority and the responsibility to yeah. bring the kingdom, the presence of God into those spaces. And, and I think, um, Paul, I think COVID has demolished some of that for us. I think it's taken a little bit of this, you know, churches is just a place I go to. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I love the corporate, corporate gathering. I do. I, I love the corporate gathering. You know, I'm a musician. I, this is a great place. I, I love that. In my heart, I've been saying, God, um, I don't think the corporate gathering will go away. We'll, we will gather corporately again. I, 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 let me just make that clear. I, I, that's, that is going to come again. But I yeah. think when it does, our agenda and, and the experience of those mm. coming, you know, something's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to change. It's going to be different. So, so there's a, <sighs> yeah, go on. The, um, I like what you say about the Ecclesia. You know, it's, um, they have the authority in that region or that area. And to, they have to take up the responsibility. I am. Um, um, I do believe that God has destroyed some 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 traditions that we have in our congregations. You know, Paul never writes to Timothy and asks him this question. There's one question that Paul never asks Timothy. He never says, "Hey, Timothy, how was church on Sunday?" Because <laughs> just by asking that question, it gives us a permission to rate it. Ah, it was five out of 10. And, and so we've created this rating system by asking the wrong questions. And so, so I believe that that question can no longer be used in the season that God is taking yeah. us into. Because actually, yeah. if you say, hey, how is church? It's like, man, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, God is doing things in the business, in my school. And, and the rating has to be removed. Yeah, I, I think the church and I use that in a broad sense, has to come to a place where we recognize all of life is holy. Mm. Um, there's something about sacramentalizing every moment, about recognizing the holiness of God. Um, you know what, Paul? I, I, and, uh, I, I, I believe holiness is not something we strive for. Hol holiness is something we give expression to. 
Um, and, and, you know, the minute that you, the minute that, that Christ died and said it is finished, all of humanity was repositioned into a new reference and to a new framework. And when your heart and your life is awakened to that, you access the, 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 the most precious riches of heaven. Mm. And I think where the dislocation sometimes for us comes, it, it moves into the space where we, we, we don't recognize, understand, grasp this fully with our mind. And that's why we don't often give expression to that. But mm. when, when, when we recognize that, that all of the holiness, the fullness of God dwells in me. <laughs> I mean, even just me saying that now, it feels as if, you know, my fuses are blowing because I, it, it, it's still, I think we struggle to get that. Yeah. Um, in Colossians 2 you know, Paul the Apostle writes, he says, all the fullness of God is found in Christ. By implication, all the fullness of God is now found in me. And, and I think where we, where we sometimes fall short is, is that we think holiness is something that we have to strive for. Holiness is not something I strive for. Holiness is something I give expression to. And that's why washing the dishes can be a holy moment. God can be revealed. It's, it's Jacob saying, you know, God is here and I didn't even know it. Um, when you're in your next business meeting, God is already there. You know, how, oh, what is, what does he want you to give expression to? What is he, what is the holiness of life that he wants you to sacramentalize in this moment, that next business mm -hmm. meeting or the next business contract, or perhaps your next business venture, because your business shut down now during COVID and you're asking God, you know, what on earth needs to happen now? There's something in that that I believe God wants to stir the church in to recognize our holiness, to recognize our righteousness, to recognize our capacity. If you're a stay-at-home mom, whether you're a grandparent looking after your grandchildren, all of life is holy. And when we recognize that, you know, we, we start seeing opportunities. Um, a, a while back, I read this article here in one of our newspapers. They were speaking about something called a reticular activation system ras wow. okay um they say what happens to you if you decide you're going to buy a new uh car um what car are you going to buy paul a bmw yeah um, let's make it big okay let's make it big you're going to buy a bmw there's a certain model of it and there's a certain color that you're interested in what the ras what the reticular activation system does is you're now going to drive on the street and suddenly you're going to realize how many mm. of these cars are on the road. True. You're, I've seen gonna, that. Yeah. You, you get to pick and pay. He's like, Oh my goodness, here's one. And Oh, there's one, you know, and, and you're driving. And then and the fact is those cars were always there, but what has happened yeah. is something in your mind has opened up to see it. Yeah. And I believe that is what God is doing with the church in this moment. I believe he's opening up our mind to see these opportunities of faith to see these opportunities of love and to see these opportunities of hope. Um, and the, the, more we, the more we allow that, that activation system to actually become a part of our life, the better our chances are of seeing that. And that's why when we so recognize good. these opportunities, that moment becomes holy. Life becomes holy. We give mm. expression to the glory of God in that situation sorry you know I, I i get completely captivated and consumed by this irenaeus one of the early church fathers he said the glory of god is man fully alive i love that mm. you know there's something um uh the, the greek word for anthropos human um actually comes from two words anatropos ana meaning upward, and tropos, a manner of life. To be human is to have an upward manner of life. Isn't that wow. beautiful? Um, you know, so, so when God, God gives us this capacity to breathe, to live, to create, to innovate, to share, to love, to live, to laugh, you know, to, to breathe, to run, to walk, to sit, to to meditate, to think, to pray, to bless, to speak yeah. blessing, all of this becomes, and that, you know, if you just think about it, this is what the devil wanted to steal from us. 
um, you know, Jesus actually says that the enemy is a human slayer. He's a he's an anthropos killer. He's an mm. upward manner of life killer. Um, he he doesn't want to destroy you physically. He wants to take away this upward manner of yeah. life. That's so what he good. wants to take away. And and if the church can realize that we when we walk into a place, when you walk into, you know your house and your here's your wife and your kids that uh, you bring into that space an upward manner of life when you walk into the pharmacy um you know to buy something you you bring an upward manner of life when you're speaking to the cashier at the pick and pay you bring an upward manner of life into that moment you know when you worship god in a in, in a in a in a worship song it's exactly the same as as speaking to the cashier as what it is eating a meal as what it is. And, and I'm not, you know, I'm not diminishing anything. I'm actually saying, let's, let's keep focus about the capacity we have mm. to bring the love and the glory of God into, into our spaces. Um, beautiful. I think uh, really beautiful. It's, it's strange that you were talking about the, the holiness and the sacred things of God this last week. I was ministering on a Sunday morning about the sacred things of God. And, um, and this weekend coming up again, and I realized that wow. the word says there are, there are certain things that belong to the Lord and there are certain things that he's given us. And those things that belong to the Lord are sacred. Um, the Ark of the Covenant was sacred. It was his, the Ten Commandments are his. The Bible says his Holy Spirit when you go and look at the root word of holy, it's actually sacred. Mm. So it's the sacred spirit of God. And yeah. he says, don't mess with the Holy Spirit, you know. And then he says, the, the cross is his. The blood is his. These are sacred things. And then he goes and he says, but the church is his. The church is sacred. And, and when we say the church, it's the body of Christ. Yeah. Jesus gave the sacred yeah. blood so that he could buy and whatever he buys becomes sacred. Yeah. And therefore he says, don't touch my body. Don't defile my body because I have bought them. They are mine. They have now become mm. sacred. Mm. And um, mm. I'm, I love what you said about the sacred things. And if we just, this has given me a whole new understanding when it, I, I firstly need to get an understanding of who I am. And, but if it's just, Oh, I'm righteous and <clears throat> his, and it's actually his righteousness. So it's his yeah. righteousness is sacred, you yeah. know, but if I have got no concept of sacred, then I, I struggle for that RSA or that RTA to click on, to go, I'm just not yeah. getting it. But, yeah. but I got to get the realization that because of the cross, I have now become sacred and holy to him. Changes, changes the whole perspective on things. Completely. This is the next, I mean, I think you've answered it for us, but I'm just throwing it out there if you want to add anything, is how do I position myself in the Lord accurately? You know, I felt like you were touching on such good stuff there with the sacredness. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, here's, a, here's a little study for you to go and do uh, in your message prep for Sunday, Paul. Um, there are three things in the New Testament that God says, I haven't given you these things. Um, it's fascinating. You know, God has given us these sacred things. And then, then he says, there's three things. I haven't given you this one. He says in Timothy he says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. So there are things sometimes that I think we carry that God yeah. has not given us. And, so and you know, we, we end up carrying these things as like having something in your hand. You know, if I, if I've got something in my hand, I can't pick something else up. I first have to put this down. Mm. And when I put that down, I can pick something else up. And, and maybe this is a challenge for, you know, through, through God's word to people's lives to saying there are some things that you're carrying. It's time to put that down because God never Come gave on. you that. Um, <laughs> you know, so um, for me to, how do I accurately position myself in, 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 in Christ? You know, there's something when, when we recognize um, how much Christ has done on our behalf, um, you know, the fact that I, the fact that I have been included in a reference of, of, of fallenness, sinfulness was not even because I did sinful deeds. It was because one man took one obedience, uh, disobedient step, Adam, 
the fact that I was even referenced, even included in any form of reference as far as sinfulness and brokenness is concerned was because Adam was disobedient. So it's not because of my sinful deeds that I was called a sinner. It was because of Adam's disobedience. And now Paul says in Romans 5, he says so much more, much more because of the obedience of one man. Mm. I have now been repositioned. You know, so it's not even my righteous deeds that make me righteous. It's yeah. because of his righteous deeds that I've yeah. been declared righteous. And now my righteous deeds are not something I do so that I can become more righteous. Now my righteous deeds are because I am giving expression to his righteousness that, is, that, is, that has taken its hold of me. Mm. You know, uh, Paul, I, if you're asking me, how do I accurately position myself in the Lord? I, I, I can't think of any other way to more accurately position yourself within Christ than to find yourself in him. Um, mm. Because it's okay. in him. You know, anything that comes against you actually comes against him. You know, say fear comes against you. It's actually not coming against you. It's coming against the very fact that you find yourself in Christ. Wow. And so when, when you position yourself within him, um, you know, it, it, it repositions you in a, in a way that, that, that and, and I love the word accurately, because what it does, it gets rid of things that should never have been there. Um, it it mm. drops off by itself and, and we struggle with it. You know, we, mm. I, that, that's the message of the entire New Testament. He says, renew your mind, renew your thinking, yeah. you know, do not get caught up in. Why does he say do not? because we do <laughs> <laughs> that's why it says do not and that's um, why it says remember because we forget because we forget <laughs> um and i think you know if we can recognize that to say lord um you know the moments the moments of my biggest heartache are often because i have not seen myself in christ you know, uh, if, if I don't see myself in Christ, things become um, a huge strain. Mm -hmm. I, it, it becomes hard work to forgive somebody. It becomes, you know, I have to die to myself to, to let go of something. When you're in Christ, these things come naturally. The other day we were wow. sitting around the table with our boys, you know, having... Having four boys, one of whom is second year at varsity and, you know, one who's in high school and two that are still in primary school. Having four of them around the table every day for almost six months now. Um, it, you know, the testosterone um, uh, heightens the emotions sometimes. So now we, know, while, now we know why you went to the bush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, the thing is, you know, we had a conversation around the table and we sp spoke about the fruit of the spirit um, and to recognize that the fruit of the spirit is something that comes to us naturally. We are logos beings. We are spirit word beings. We aren't natural human beings that are looking for spiritual experiences. Uh, Jesus says that in, in, in his prayer in John 17. He says, you are a, you are a logos being. You're a word being. We are word compatible. And I'm not talking about the pages of the Bible. I'm speaking about the very words, the thoughts, the, the origin, the thought processes of God. We're compatible mm -hmm. with these things. And so, you know, sometimes I hear Christians say, you know, oh, I, I pray so hard that God will give me patience. No, no, no. You, God has already given you patience. Mm -hmm. Patience is the thing that comes the most natural to your character. Wow. Loving kindness is natural to your character. Joy is a natural thing to your spirit. That's why these things are so liberating to us. It's when we allow anxiety and fear and bitterness and unforgiveness and and, 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 you know, fear for the future, when we allow these things to come sit on our spirit, that they affect us, spirit, soul, and body. That's why we become sick. That's why we become, you know, that's why we become ill. Because yeah. these things are not natural to us. They're not part of our design. They're actually so that which is foreign to our design. God did not create us from that space. 
He created mm-hmm. us from joy, love, peace, loving kindness. So now we're sitting next to the table saying to the boys, listen, which one comes easy? And we had to bring them to a place where they have to recognize. We have to recognize. I have to recognize because I forget, because I allow my thinking to align with a thought process that is not in Christ. So if you want to be accurate, live accurate, allow yourself to be immersed Mm. in accurate thinking about what Christ has accomplished for you. You know, um, Paul, uh, you've heard me say this before, and it is a little bit of a a pet phrase, I suppose, but I, I truly mean this at the deepest level. You know, Christ was not just the example for us. Um, as if we were to strive to be like him. He, at the deepest level, was an example of us. And so, you know, he came to show us what life in its full essence truly looks like. You know, he, he, he cried when a friend passed away. He, he, he spoke with anger when he was confronted with religion. He, um, he, He went to the woman who was in adultery and did not condemn her, but but brought her into a place of true identity. He Mm. set the captive free. He brought anointing where there was bondage. You know, he spoke words of healing. This was this was Jesus. He Mm. he came to show us what it looks like when we align ourselves accurately. Um, And and I believe. The more we discover that, the more we, we, we open our lives to that. We're going to find, we're going to discover things about ourselves and about Christ who already dwells within us um, in such a beautiful way that it, it, I, it's going to change things for us radically. I want to read you a portion of scripture from Colossians chapter 2 that I read recently, if you don't mind. Go for it. Um, in Colossians chapter 2, um, verse 9 and 10 he says for christ is the complete fullness of deity living in human form Mm. listen to this christ is the complete fullness of deity living in human form then verse 10 he says and our own completeness is now found in him we are completely filled with god as christ's fullness overflows within us yes mm. <laughs> <Sure>. yes <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, yeah. so it's a mouthful yeah there's something yeah i think if somebody's listening to this today and you're saying you know how can i complete how can i align myself more accurately i want to plead with you it's not about doing more Sure. It's not about doing less. It's not about doing differently. It's not about accurate alignment in Christ is to immerse yourself in the things that he thinks about you. Mm. That's, you could not and cannot be more accurate than that um, because he is our very point of reference and departure. He is there is no greater place for us to depart from. And here's the beautiful thing. You know, he surrounds us. He, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm. You know, he's at the beginning of this and he's at the end of this. He, he started it and he finished it. He didn't even ask our permission to do that. Um, he didn't ask, you know, didn't, didn't ask if he may. He didn't ask if we would be delighted or not. He, he included, he invited us into the space of eternal reference um yes it's beautiful and and, it's beautiful. and he's um and whatever we do we're not going to change his mind about it eh? he's, made no up way. His mind. he's made up his mind he's made up his mind he's more convinced about your future he's more convinced about your design um than 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 you will ever be <laughs> you, you there's there's nothing in his thoughts that could ever contradict you know if you think about the sacrifice that jesus made in order to accomplish that paul um that was the reason why jesus died he the reason he died was not because god felt sorry for us he didn't feel sorry for humanity god sent his son his incarnate word 
so that we could, in, at the deepest level, get an image of what the Father truly looks like. Mm. And, 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 and at the deepest level, discover that this is the blueprint from which we were created. You know, and, and he paid with equal price. Uh, sure. he, God didn't look for a bargain. You know, I, I don't know if you guys go to the shops now, but <laughs> he, he, wasn't, he wasn't looking for a post-COVID bargain. Um, you know, he wasn't looking for a post sin bargain. You know, maybe the devil gives me off price today. Um, he came in, he paid with equal price. The only thing, the only thing in the universe that could equal your value was his son. Mm. That was the only thing that would balance out that scale. Remember God ab abhors, he hates a scale that is not balanced correctly somebody who's trying to cheat on the scale remember that yeah so, yeah. so he, he cannot he cannot he cannot go against his own nature in that so he pays with equal value with equal value he doesn't sure. overpay he pays with equal value wow. for humanity and and then here's the beautiful thing when he dies you know god doesn't raise him up until all he, all humanity has been declared innocent and the minute we have been declared innocent yeah he raises his son up from the dead because now it becomes the guarantee mm. for everything that he has accomplished on our behalf you know and our biggest the biggest thing that we could do in our walk with god is not to do more but is to receive more um you know how do we repay him for his goodness says says psalms i think it's 48 to 84 i'm not quite sure don't, please don't quote me on that but psalm says how do we repay the lord he says i lift up my cup why so that god can fill it more there's something about not achieving but receiving that i think is so paramount in scripture that we cannot ignore um you know we've made the gospel so much about us having to achieve more but the minute we receive and we then find ourselves with a capacity to give expression to that which we've received, it changes it. It's now no longer me striving to be like Jesus. It's me having received the fullness of God. And now, because I live like Jesus, I give expression to his beauty and his glory and his splendor. Something immense happens. You know, yeah becomes like a well from the inside yeah you know it's the woman at the well sitting not uh, can i offer you some water jesus <laughs> no you can't <laughs> your best attempt would never satisfy this moment your best attempt would never align your life accurately but drink come receive come drink from this water and you'll discover a well from the inside of you yeah, that's, that's, come on. I'm going to keep you here till nine o'clock. <laughs> <if I carry. laughs> I'll keep going. You can so see, good. you can see where the passion ignites. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm convinced of this. Uh, I tell you, um, over these, over these, um, over the COVID time and over summer holidays, our kids have obviously been at home. So now they, 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 they get to, they get a bit more confronted with the word um, in that sense. And, you know, the, the preaching of the word than what they would normally in a normal week be pre COVID. I mean, at 12 o'clock every day, I'm on Facebook, I'm preaching the word, you know, Sheree is doing a devotional, she's preaching the word. Our kids are with us on Sunday when his live streaming happen. And so, and it's opened some fascinating conversation, conversations around our table. And the more we've had the privilege of sharing just life with our boys, you know, this is how Jesus thinks about this. This is how God thinks about this. This is how God thinks about sin. This is how, you know, all of these things. The more we get confronted, the more convinced I am of this word. The more convinced I am that God even, and maybe just going back to the COVID and, and church and everything else. You know, I think what's important for us, Paul, and I love what you're, I love this. Uh, I love hearing what you guys are preaching about at the moment, because I, I think one of the biggest mistakes we can do at the moment is I, it's clear God is pouring new wine into new wine skins. I mean, we, we know that we can, we can, it's, you don't need, you know, you need, you only need half a Bible and half a brain to recognize that. <laughs> um, he is pouring new wine into new wine skins, but here's the thing. 
if we're going to make if we're going to make the conversation about the the church going forward about the wine skin um it's going to become all about methods and ways and you know all kinds of stuff and i think we're going to lose the plot if we do that it has to be about the new wine that's what god mm. is doing uh the wine skin is just the measure that he pours this into and mm. i think the most important thing we can do um in in in, in, in the way going forward is to ask ourselves, what are the key and core ingredients of wine? What does wine look like? And if we can nail that, the wine skin doesn't matter. Sure. It, 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 you know, it could be a square one. It could be a round one. It could be an online one. It could be an in-person one. It could be a hybrid. It could be, I, I don't really care. But if we don't know what the things are that we need to take with us into the future, yeah. I think that's when we'll lose our way. Sure. Um, that's when we'll lose our way. Uh, the New Testament church took five things with them into the new way going forward. They said, let's do prayer. Let's do fellowship. Let's do the preaching of the word. Let's do communion. And let's do gathering. Um, those are the things I said. Let's take this. You know, communion. How do we do communion? It doesn't really matter as long as we do it pray how do we pray it doesn't really matter let's pray you know uh, um these are the things that i think the church has to define for itself what are the things we're going to take into this new season mm. what are the what are the things we're not going to negotiate the wine skin doesn't matter we mustn't get caught up in that so good love it yanni that was powerful and i think um I don't even want to carry on with any other questions because I think that you hit it um, beautifully. I think that's what the Lord wanted to release to us tonight and all those that are watching and uh, just give that hope to people that love. And um, I, I love how you articulated that, you know, to say it's, it's really about lifting up our cup and just receiving, you know, that's, that's what God's doing in the season. That's what he's calling us into and, and not the doing more. And out of yeah. that, out of that receiving, there's going to be a natural expression. There's going to be a natural, I can't help myself now. I need to do something. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I can't help myself. You know, if you, if you're going to strive to try and do something, um, just stop, hold your cup up, have a drink and allow the Lord to do it in you. Eh? Yeah. It's beautiful. We don't have to do these things, Paul. We get to do these things. Yeah. Um, yeah. We get yeah. to do it. Yanni, don't you want to pray for us and the guys watching Love online to. and even those that are going to be watching in the week later on just to yeah. um, just see what the Lord wants to say to you there. Yeah. yeah. Father, we thank you um, for the privilege, the joy, the honor of doing life with you in every moment, in every day, in every way. And Lord, I want to pray over each person watching um, together with Paul, myself, and perhaps may, later in this week. I want to pray, Lord, not that you would bless our lives. Um, and Lord, we want to recognize you have already blessed us with every spiritual blessing that there is in Christ. So our prayer is not, Lord, that you will bless us. Our prayer is that give us an awakening to recognize, realize, tap into the blessedness that we have already received. My prayer tonight, Lord, is, is may we bless you. May we honor you. I wow. want to pray for the church in Valcom, Lord. May, may they honor you. May they bring mm. glory to your name. May, may, may your fame be made known in a wider sense in that city because of who they are, because mm. of what they've tapped in, because of how they align their lives accurately. And so, Lord, may they bless you. May their lives bring eternal honor to who you are may they give deep expression to your character may your voice in that city be heard because of their lives may the broken be healed lord may those who find themselves in pain may they discover love and those who are lost may they discover faith because of their lives and so lord thank you thank you for what you're doing this has mm. been a this has been an incredible season we recognize, Lord, it's been a, a season where so much has changed. So much has changed in our thinking and our understanding. But, Lord, our expectation, our hope still remains in you. You are the source. You are the yes. origin. You yes. are the very reason that we breathe in 
and breathe out, Lord. We thank you. We thank you that you have crowned us with your honor and with your glory. Give us the wisdom, Lord. Give us the the boldness, the adventure to give expression to that in every facet of our lives. And Lord, I want to pray, may there be a sense of, 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 of your anointing, your work through mm. our lives. May it increase, yes. Lord. May it increase. May it increase in the city. May it increase. May not just in a physical sense, Lord, but in a sense of influence. Thank you, Lord. I sense tonight, Paul, God is enlarging the voice of influence of, of, of kingdom ministries. There's mm. something about the voice of influence that I believe God is touching on tonight. He's putting his finger on it. And, and it's not about doing more. It's about being more. Yes. And Lord, I thank you for this. Thank you that we can pray into this tonight. Yes. In Jesus' wonderful name. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Yanni, thank you. That was so good. Really enjoyed it. Um, and to everyone that wa is watching tonight, uh, yeah. thank you so much. It's really great to have you guys with us. And we really appreciate you guys buying out the time. And I know that you've been, um, you've been encouraged tonight. So share this, uh, share this link with a couple of friends. This message gets out there. We love you guys. Have a great evening. Thanks, Yanni. Cheers, man. Bye.